Okay, let's go ahead and start our color wheel today. And I'm going to start with red. And because I'm not mixing red with anything, I can choose any red that I feel like is the true red. So quinacridone is a little bit pink for me. Um, naphthol is pretty good. Um, cadmium red light is a little bit too orange. Cad red dark is a little bit too dark. Alizarin crimson is definitely on the burgundy-ish side. So I think I'm going to choose um, naphthol red. So because we're going to be mixing tints and shades, let's put out a pretty good pile of naphthol red. Not huge. This is actually a pretty big pot big pile. And because I can use it right out of the mother tube, I'm going to go ahead and paint red for my mother color right here. And I've taped the edges so I can um, stay a little bit neat. If you want to, you can cha paint um, tape between the shades and tints, but you don't have to. So let's get this painted on here. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to clean my brush. Now, I have to make tints and shades, and you can use uh, titanium white or zinc white. Many of you have fallen in love with zinc white since um, we did the experiment. And so I'm going to use um, zinc white. Because I have to make three, tint, three, shade, three tints, I'm going to mix a little bit of white in with it. And as you can see, it's already starting to tint down a little bit. So I want my, my tints to be even. And so I'm going to go ahead and make another pile. Ooh, that was a lot. And if I homogenize it really well, mix it up really, really well, then it might not be such a lot. Okay, so let's find a, um, one between them. And again, I want even steps. So I feel like um, that's those two are really close. And I might just get rid of this one altogether. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, my palette knife isn't making great contact with the ground. It might be bent. So let's go ahead and make that our lightest. And we can make a, another middle color in here, add a little bit more white to it. And as I am getting very messy, I'll go ahead and clean this up. Let's go ahead and put this one right next to that one, and this one right next to that one. And then likewise, this one right next to that one, and, and do a little bit more cleaning in here. Look at the colors a little bit more. And again, I feel like these are really close, so maybe I'll go ahead and combine these two again. And see how that jump is. I feel like that's pretty good. And I feel like I want a jump in between that. And then I'm going to go ahead and get bold and make my last one. And I can steal some from here to make it not go down as far. And I feel like I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and mix our shades. So whichever black you use, I don't think it matters that much. But, ooh, this top is on really good, so I'm going to go ahead and, and loosen it. So try not to breathe the fumes. 
because it is kind of a melting plasticish smell but you don't want to melt it completely and you don't want to touch it with your hands once you get it hot because um, the lid gets a little warm and it could burn you so let's go ahead and put some black out here and same thing as I'll put, pull a little black over here and I don't want to mess up this whole thing, so make sure my palette knife is clean. And let's go ahead and, and start making black into the red. And I can kind of see where I am with this. And then maybe I'll take a little bit less or steal some from here. Okay, that looks like a really good first jump. Maybe a little bit um, too fast of a jump. So let me go ahead and, and set that aside. And I'll keep what's on my palette knife and um, make a little bit less of a jump. And see how that feels right next to that. Again, I want this all to be nice and homogenized. Okay, let's try this one for our next jump. You can see I, I really did put out too much paint, so um, I was kind of expecting to mix a lot more, but I'm keeping it pretty fine. Um, let's go ahead and see that. Can you see the difference? I feel like it's a little bit of a slow jump, so I'm going to add a tinge of black to it. And if I add too much black to it, I can use it as my third shade. So that works pretty good. And I think that right next to it, um, maybe maybe just a little bit too much of a jump. Let's go ahead and mix some more undiluted red into it. And that might be pretty good. And let's go ahead and mix our last one. Don't get gobs of it in there because it moves it really fast and that what I put in there I think moved it a little bit fast so I have all this other stuff I can mix into it and I think that that might be a pretty good jump mm, yeah I think that looks pretty good okay I'm going to um, clean this up so I don't, I'm going to keep my red because, oh, okay. So um, speaking of red, this stuff was, had other colors put into it. So I can't really use it. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you're wasting paint because you squished all that paint out there and you're not going to use it for anything, um, go ahead and make sure your finger is fairly clean or your palette knife. I like using my finger um, and kind of knock your paint down in the jar and then take it and slowly feed it back in. See how it's kind of gobbling up that paint? Feed it back in and that way you can save your paint. I already put red on my um, color wheel so I don't need any of this and I can't remember if this was adulterated or not and it looks like it's clean so fingers make really good squeegees okay once you do that don't put your lid back on because uh, paint acts like glue so make sure you clean this off really well and you might want to clean out your your cap if it got too messy or else the tube will get stuck on. So clean it out. And I can clean it out better if I want to. Clean it out. And then put your tube back on. And you've saved yourself a tablespoon of paint. Which is lovely. I hate wasting paint. Okay, so let's go to our color wheel. And with the color wheel, with the Eaton wheel, you can go... Um, either direction you want to you can um, you can have the the lights go out to the um, edge or you can have the um, lights go into the middle I think on the traditional Eaton wheel 
um, the lights go into the middle. You can also reverse it. You can have lights go in and then lights go out. You know, either way you want to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep it fairly traditional and I'm going to have the lights go in. And with that tape on here, it allows me to be a little bit sloppy. I like being sloppy. Ooh, there's a hair in it. Let's go ahead and pull that hair out. So I'm using um, Sumi paper, which is really good for Sumi ink. And it's a little bit shiny, um, but it works really well. And uh, the, the um, paper has a, a clay coating on it, which means that it's going to um, absorb my paints a little bit um, so that they won't be as shiny when they dry, but that's okay. If I want more shine, I can always add a shine to it. And I think my jumps turned out pretty good. Which is good for the first painting of the day. And I think I'm going to go back before I get rid of these paints. And I actually won't get rid of the paints. I will um, probably after I turn off the recording, I will um, give it one more coat so it's nice and solid. I'll let you guys go before that. Make sure you rinse your paintbrush after each one, or you could be, um, or you could be making um, a mistake when you add your other value of red. Okay, let's get into the shades. So, do I need to add any more of this red that's left over my palette to give this another coat? I think giving it one more coat makes it a little bit richer. Okay, now off to the shades. Shade number one. So quiet. I got my um, some things in my garden planted yesterday. It was such a beautiful day. Working in the garden is as nice as painting with colors. And voila, we have shade number one. Rinse off the brush. Shade number two. Um, do remember with acrylics especially that the color dries darker. So um, that's why you want to have them wet on your palette is because you want them to be drying at the same time so they don't change um, dramatically. Okay, shade number three. Darker shade. Darkest shade. And again, I think I used um, enough black in this to keep them even. Okay, let me go over these, look at them up close and personal, and see if anybody needs a little bit more paint um, before I get rid of my paint, because if not, I would have to mix them all over again. And when you mix them all over again, um, you might be having to mix them all all over again to get the the movement between the two that one looks good 
I feel like my um, number two shade could use just a little bit more paint in places. And my number one shade. I think I mix the exact right amount of paint. And I'm really glad that um, I saved that paint that I put out because, um, like I said, I hate wasting paint. It's um, expensive and, and it just doesn't do any good. So um, when, you, when you're done putting it back in the tube, make sure you wash your fingers well before you go eating potato chips. Okay, first step, tear down, and we're going to let this dry, and when um, it's dry, I'll come back and make my blue. So I want to start with my primary colors, so red's done, yay!